a daughter, the two of you could win that as well. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess probably. Yeah, yeah. So will we be drawing these earrings as you have them on the screen? Yeah. I or think, will yeah. you be- And the only reason, and, and like, I, I know that I, I actually believe you. I think they probably were the other way, but they were definitely photographed this way. And just like- With, the, reason. with the conventional lighting arrangement, I think we should like stick with that. Um, all right. Oh, welcome Moth. Good to see you. Um, all right, should we find, should we do this thing? Let's just do this thing. Um, and this is the warm up. Yeah. Oh, and the, the project for today is going to be a project like we've never really done before. Um, I, I tested it out with my adults this morning and it was, it was very cool. Um, my father has written a children's book. Um, and he's asked my sister to illustrate it. He's asked, he doesn't ask me to illustrate it, but, um, it's not kind of the thing that I do. Um, either way, um, I, I, he, I, he sent it to me because I'm going to help my sister illustrate it. And, um, so the sentences are really simple, but it's just like, it's kind of like a classic, like fishing story. Anyway, we're going to do these really simple sentences and, um, hopefully, um, We'll get to draw, we'll use the illustrations as a prompt, a prompt. Um, and then we'll talk about how we can just like kind of draw from imagination, like kind of draw from our, what, what's, what's out of our head and not really even have any references except for words themselves. Um, and it was really fun doing for, it this morning, I have to admit. I had, I had no idea that your father wrote that. I didn't tell anybody in that class. I didn't want, I didn't wow. want there to be any like emotional, I didn't want it to be like it was, they were like, I wanted like honest responses like you know anonymous especially with yeah um, one of the women that's in the morning class is a um a baltimore sun a, a retired baltimore sun writer and she's just really knows her stuff so i was kind of hoping for her response which i got um okay cool yes. so this is this is like it's 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 like a sun you know it's like a sun it's like an eclipse um i'm going to start with the circle and then I'm going to do like the spacing at the top. And one of the things I'm observing, I have not drawn these before, by the way. Um, so we've got this, it almost looks like a keyhole or something, or maybe even like a thermometer gauge. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have, it looks like there's five, you know, beaded or ribbed um, rays of light. And then there would be five, but there's six. So this center is uh, one of them. So the whole thing is divided into 10 units, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah. So there's 10 units. So we've got the, this double beam at the top is really just like a spacing. Um, and I think the ribbed portions or the beaded gold um, it, are the longer ones. So it goes long, short, long, short. So um, I'm just going to start on the circle and you can almost, it's, it would be nice if it was 12 because then we can make the, the dial go according to, you know, the conventional clock, like 12, you know, one, two, three, five, six, you know, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. It's E would be easy to do that, but it's, it's 10 separate units. So we divided, let's see, we'll get this guy. It's almost like a starfish. So this one's going to be one of the beaded ones. And then I guess at six o'clock is another beaded one. Wasn't it star fruit? Yeah, it was a star fruit. But like, I, what is this? I don't even know what a star fruit looks like. Do you? Yeah, it's yeah. actually really good. Does it look like this? I'm thinking dragon no. fruit. I'm thinking dragon fruit. I think it looks more like dragon fruit. The star fruit doesn't have as many uh, curves. The star fruit um looks actually more similar to this than the dragon fruit to me but i feel like it's a little less textured like when you think of a star fruit you think very smooth green skin you don't yeah. really think bumpy textured gold skin so with the color and the texture you get a little more dragon fruit feel um, and yes it does have a few more points than a traditional well, the ones that I've seen, uh, starfruit, um, mm -hmm. 
I mean, you gotta you gotta figure too. These are like a thousand year old star fruits too, so this sure. stuff could have changed over over time. I know that there's a I know bananas have changed a lot over the centuries. Um, a bunch of a bunch of fruit has. It's kind of interesting um, how that goes. How they can, you know, like dogs, you can kind of like almost breed, uh, you know, plants to do certain things um, over time. Um, I will, when I have a moment, I, you know, when we're done with this, well, actually, Stacy, could you, would, are you looking up the star fruit? I can't, no, I wasn't, but I'm happy look, to. Could you, look up a, could you just look up an image and hold it up to the camera? Yeah, of That'd course. Really, I can't do it on my phone because we're drawing. Um, okay, so I got two beaded ones. I'm actually going to quickly put the beads on there and they could be stripes. You could see them as like little um, indentions but it's definitely the textured ray and whatever texture okay. you for the ray, I, it doesn't particularly matter. Um, okay, yes. So, oh, excuse me. So um, I'm gonna explain just a couple things. Yeah. This yeah. is a picture, they do, they do have some seeds and this is a picture of the fruit being sliced. So that's a slice of the star fruit, which is, uh, rectangular but pointed at the ends. And this is the fruit that you're seeing from one of the tips or ends mostly. It just looks so cool to me. It's like yellow green. And then yeah. it's, it's just so cool. Like when you think of a star, you think of like a flat, almost two dimensional, like yeah. five yeah. point polygon. Right. But when you put it, when you, you turn that to the side, it's really it just cool. looks so. Well, it's an, I think it's an actual oval. Like if you were to see it from the side. Like oh, here this. you go. This, this is also um, interesting. It shows you the sliced fruit and an aerial of the whole fruit. So have a peek at that, if you will. Yeah, yeah, it is. <clears throat> I got to go to mom's. Mom's always has really good exotic produce. Um, but Stacy, um, when you were sliced, and now this is the thing that I was thinking, um, the star fruit may have evolved out of this form. And so I'm gonna draw mine the way that I think it, it the way that it, it probably evolved. So I've got one up here, one here, one at the bottom. So I need two more large size, large tips. All right, so I'll do that beaded. I'm gonna make these a little bit longer than I maybe should. And then, so that's beaded. So it's a five star sided starfish. And then what if, instead of making these close to the same length, the ones that are not beaded, what if we made those half the size? Okay. And then if you make those half the size, then you get the girth. And we can even do that with the opening. So now when you link it up, and I'm wondering, and if I'm thinking about a starfish, star fruit that I, we just observed, um, what if it swelled con convex out instead of convex, instead of concave in? See how I'm picking up the like the like the what the, the star fruit form that we are familiar with. And of course, it reminds me of a spider web, probably because yeah. my uh, lengths are a little shorter. So the geom <clears throat> what I'm saying is the geometry is there. It's just um, where the star fruit began to point and get longer on that these five points and like or get shorter on those lower ones. Um, I think the same, you know, the same the same aspects of the fruit are still there, which is kind of cool to think about. Yeah, you know, like this, this side just like, for some reason, decided to grow shorter. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna and that could be where the sun, through. you know, where it was facing, uh, the, the part where it was facing the sun. Yeah, I mean, who knows why things evolve like that. Um, all right, so then there is uh, a little suggestion of the third dimension um, to, to give it, make it gold. So instead of being a fruit, I'm, I'm actually making it now um, a solid piece of metal. 
Um, my shadow will have to be adjusted. And then, so there's the inside of the rim, you know, the inside ring of that earring on both the left and the right. And then there's a little cast shadow in there. You want to go easy on that shadow though. And I don't have my tortillion out, but I probably should. I think Stacy having my tortillion this morning may have helped a lot. Yeah. You I would think so. I just can't believe I didn't even use it. It's like, it's like I, I, I live my life imagining I don't have a tortillion for some reason. It's like, it's like a, it's like some kind of like, um, what is like a, what is a religious order that like, like what is the act of punishing yourself, like a fast or something, but what is it, what is something else if you have a religious reason for abstaining from something or almost like punishing yourself? Uh, like Lent? would be like that yeah like, it's, like, like a sac it's almost like a second a weird okay. sacrifice i don't know what i should i shouldn't i should have a tortillion on my person all of the time because they're it's so helpful i mean tortillions are so good i mean just look at the edge of the like the the thickness of these the shadow of the the sides that are radiating you know the light's coming from the left and you know by darkening the underside of these beams it gives them third dimension mm -hmm. and in order for things to look like they're tone they're toned and not textured they need to be softened darn <laughs> what happened to you no oh, that's why we have a race change i put uh the gold um balls on one of the wrong uh 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 lines or whatever we're calling them if you go on youtube and you look um the met the metropolitan museum of art has some a couple of really nice videos on ancient techniques of gold making and there's this phenomenon that you just have to see like you can take a little chunk of gold like off of a cord or something you know just like a little like a little like say there was a wire and you cut a little piece of it and you put it on this piece of like stone or charcoal and you hit it with a blowtorch and it gets so hot it liquefies then it like immediately turns into a bead like a beaded sphere like like mercury yep. gold at a certain temperature liquefies and it becomes exactly like mercury and it balls up and then it dries like that and you can take you know equal sized spheres of gold and then resolder them. And if you look at all the ancient gold decorations um, designs, they have like all these little beaded, stippled. Air now that's not what these are. I don't think. I think this is a cord that's been, you know, tapped into and and flattened out to get these um, striations. <clears throat> but I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just honor the. Uh, I'm looking at this one now, and, I, and the starfruit. Um, rays feel like they bend a little bit. I didn't pick up as much on the bending on this side, mm -hmm. but I'm really picking up on the yeah. bend on that side, almost like it's a, um, like a sea urchin or something. So I'm doing the, the, the serrate, the straight serrated or beaded ones first. And I'm actually giving a little bit of a bend to the ones, a little bend to the left, uh, a little, a little bend to the right. And then for some reason, look at the, that one seems really long. The one that's not beaded. Let's just do the beads, beads. Yeah, it does. I think it is longer. I yeah. don't think it's an illusion, do you? No, but that makes me wonder whether, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. You'd have to look at these from different angles. But that one is really, really long all right so i got this straights and then i'm also going to do the um the webbing i'm going to do convex you know like a spider web or um an umbrella 
Oh, they have a little, they got a little umbrella feel too, which I'm kind of excited to think about. I had some reference I hadn't thought of. It's, it is hard to keep them straight, no pun intended. Um, you know, but keep it, keep the straight curve, uh, striped curve straight. And then once they get, do they, and it looks like they have like points, kind of rounded points. Interesting. Okay, and there's something else, and I don't know how these were made, but this is how I'm kind of seeing it. And tell me if you agree. Um, I'm seeing the tip being like rounded, convex out, and then it quickly turns into concave on the webbing and then convex at the tip and then concave and then convex and then concave. And it's a little bit different because it's almost like it's a solid line. So it gets, gets convex and then it hits the tip and then it curves and it goes convex and it comes up, hits the tip and then it goes concave, excuse me, convex, concave. So this is convex and then it'll come in, go concave on the webbing. It comes to the tip and then it goes convex out and then concave again. And then it's almost like the webbing helps define the roundness of the tips, not the pointiness of the tips. And that's a, a kind of a discovery for me. This is a long one. Look at this was the biggest one. That's kind of fun. Mine was also the longest one. Bizarre. They're neat though. Now I got two variations on the same same design. So the I have to yeah see, I have I have to see the inside wall of the spacing, and then the left side wall, the inside of that cylinder. Same thing, inside wall of that cylinder, kind of slight. And then I could just use my tortillion to describe the shadow. I defined the edge of my shadow on the left, on the right here with lines. And I think that might've been <clears throat> unnecessary. So it's almost like diff diffusing them out further. Right, let me make these a little bit smaller so you guys can see this, the whole shadow. The shadow is almost as beautiful as, as as anything in the piece. Oh, and I do apologize for um, the connection um, inconvenience last week. Um, I will. I'll either you know credit you guys the class, um, or we'll we'll maybe set up another time and we'll have it out or I can I can um, apply it to art camp if anybody's doing art camp shadows yeah without without having uh, without shading the whole thing Let that pop a little bit And the, if you have the opportunity to go to the Walters in particular, um, there, in the, if you go to the ancient wing or the medieval or the Egyptian, they have so much jewelry, like gold jewelry from Rome and from you know, medieval times. And there's just, it's, ama it's like really is an amazing uh, uh, collection. And there's just so fun to sketch from, to, from, like, from actual observation. And if you're looking for like to build a sketchbook with direct observational elements, you know, sometimes drawing a pair of scissors is nice, you know, um, but if you can draw some like Etruscan earrings um, or like, you know, like uh, an Athenian bracelet, it makes us, it really gives the sketchbook like a wow factor. But you got to get there. 
and it's not hard. The museums are free. And it's and they're open. And it's exhilarating. I mean, every time I go, I get my mind my, my, blows my mind. And it doesn't matter like what level you are either. Yeah, you know, like even if you feel like if you have a lot of confidence in drawing or whether you like are have zero, it actually doesn't even matter. Cause like you'll see the piece on a deeper level, whether you're you know seeing the piece from outside of the pool or whether you're seeing it three feet under, you'll see it six feet under. If you're 10 feet deep, you'll see it 15 feet deep. If you're 30 feet deep, you'll see it 35 feet deep. Um, that might not have been the best metaphor, but the, your vision gets better through drawing, no matter what level you are. And vision means actually sharpening your eyes and your mind, um, but also deepening your insight and appreciation. So it's skill-based and it's also intellectual-based. All right, it's 4.30, it's half hour. Perfect, uh, I'm gonna warm up. Do we have the, uh, uh, will we be having a two minute? Yeah, yeah, this, this, uh, let's make this the two minute warnings. Anybody, does anybody have any okay. cool earrings to show? I mean, I haven't really finished shading this one, but I Are could we... probably show now. Let's go, yeah, let's get a look. Great. And, um... All right, uh, give me one second. Take your time. Lonnie, you got anything good? Um, I'm in the car right now, so drawing was kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, dude. Um, Julia, how about you? Oh, well, that's pretty. You're gonna love. Oh, that. that's you're so gonna, nice. Hold that. Hold you're gonna that like up and uh, you're gonna love it. Hold it a little closer to you. And freeze it. Oh, that frog! Oh my gosh, a frog, a toad. What do I refer to it as? It's a fish person, and I used a like I said, I not... a, a fish person. Holy crap! I can't believe you. It's, it's a fish. So person. great. I did not do the pose myself. I did use a reference because. I cannot do folds. Mm. We're gonna have to call you Julia Foldly. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, it looks like Kristen's in the house. Is she in the house? Oh yeah. Hi, Kristen. Maya, how are you? Hi. Hey, Maya. Hey, there she is. Hi. Hi there. How's Kaya? Do, do we have proof of life? Uh, Maya, can we see your earrings? Uh, I don't want to show them. Okay. You don't have to. Um, I just had a cool little engagement over here. Um, imagining if we had a... Uh, it went convex at the tips and then concave at those creases, almost like a starfish. That might, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, went, I, was like, I was like hoping to balance out. No, that's not right. Can't do that. Like the, the, the scale of the gold felt different on the left one and the right one. So I was trying to you know, make the, make it feel like they were matching even though they had variations still trying to match them in terms of like the balance. This is what you call make taking liberties. Oh, I should have alternated those. <laughs> <clears throat> well they're pretty does anybody remember what i was going to do last week 
mean, I have a different lesson planned. It's just like, I, I have to, I've made a realization that um, I was teaching the lesson. The, the lesson for today is, um, you know, we're going to help, we're going to illustrate this children's book together. I did the first couple, I did the first couple. So I'll have to like fill you in. And I'm nervous about whether I should even tell you about, even show you my illustrations. Cause I don't want them to like influence. So yeah, yeah. I might, I might, what do you think Stace? I think that um, it sh you should definitely share it at the end of the class. At the end. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. I will share it, but I'll, I'll save it. We can look forward to it. So the, um, uh, the main point of the lesson today is like one of the things to take away is that um, art, fine art, um, the, the difference between fine art and illustration is that illustration gives you a prompt. So it's somebody else's kind of uh, story. It's somebody else's job. Like if you get, if you're like a, a like a, a book illustrator, you know, the company comes to you and you're like, here's Treasure Island and we want you to illustrate these pages. We're going to pay you for 13 different compositions. And you're like, okay, well, you read the book and then you come up with, you know, ideas um, that, you know, uh, critical moments in the book and then you execute them. Like you, the, art, the illustrator doesn't choose the subject. Somebody else chooses the subject. Where a fine artist, they choose the subject. They choose what size it's going to be. They choose what medium they're going to use. They choose how long they're going to invest in it. They, you know, no one tells them to make it better or to change anything. Like there's no clients involved. It's like the fine artist has total control. And so in a way it's like, it's a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of factors. Um, but it's also like, you know, if it's done well, it's like the purest reflection of the, the, the soul of the artist or like the, you know, the, the nature of the artist is putting entirely all of themselves into it. So like, they're the only one that can make that that piece, you know, in, in the end. So even though we make master copies, like it's not like we're making Van Gogh's, we're like, we're studying Van Gogh's ideas that he used to express himself, that kind of thing. Um, whereas illustrators and some of the illustrators can be even more, you know, kind of technically talented or technically savvy than some fine artists. Um, um, some of the greatest art in the world have, all, have come from illustration. And then, you know, there's a person who says, I want you to paint this. And then the artist goes, yeah, I'll paint it. Nice, Mr. Messick. Oh, yeah. I yeah. see that, Mr. Messick. Yeah. Oh, nice. Hold that nice and still. Yeah, that's nice. And I should mention for those who perhaps aren't familiar, the taste of a star, star fruit is really subtle. It's not like a lemon or a lime or an orange. It's, it's like very... Slightly... It's like slightly tart, but watery. Mm. Yeah. So you get the crisp, but it's also like watery and slightly tart and a little sweet. So it's, it's, it's not it's, like yeah, overpoweringly yeah. tart or sweet. It's just, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to get some. And well, how do you eat it? Do you slice it into the stars and you, do you eat the slice skin? It? Do you not eat the skin? Yeah. I eat just the eat the whole thing. I, Don't eat the I seeds though. Take, They're kinda... Yeah, I take the seeds <laughs> yeah. out. Take the seeds out. It smells like an apple. You like an apple. Yeah, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! I didn't put I didn't yeah. put regular paper down. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! I don't think it's okay. It's okay. I can print another one. I can print another one. Um, so this is this is I put I had this underneath. And I never put my, I, I cut out my piece of paper. I was going to cut the, I was going to cut the uh, frills off, the um, edges off. Yeah. And I forgot. I must've gotten distracted. That's hilarious. Well, maybe this will wind up making it onto the cover. There you have it. Okay. So here's the, I'm going to take my drawings out. I actually, I think it's a good, I think it would be, I think it would not be good to influence it because i because um i was on a rant there for a second and my rant was is is um you know you want to kind of there's two things drawing from your imagination is really hard and the strategy that i use that i have been using is to attempt to get some kind of vision so when you read the story something will come to mind not everything comes to mind um 
like immediately. It's not like you have like a fully realized picture in your head. Like the inspiration will come, but you have to be working in order to have it. Um, so when I read you these like relatively simple lines of this children's book, um, I want you to kind of like get some vision in your head um, you know, just hear the story and then you can come up with a character. Um, I actually had a huge revelation this morning when I was, I, my, my dad had sent this over and I knew it was about like my niece. Like I knew it, that it was about like my niece or whatever. And my, and my sister. Now, the weird thing is, is that I was envisioning people. And then I went and found the, my Beatrix Potter, um, book in my shelf. I was like, maybe I'll have some like, you know, other illustration references. And I was like, oh my gosh, it could not, these characters might not actually be people. These characters might be, um, you know, rabbits or bears or whatever. So I actually wound up going with bears. Um, so the, the, the person who has, who has the vision of the story can give you assistance um, and, I'll, and I'll read what I'm presented with. So this is an actual art challenge. And they, this is what illustrators are faced with all the time. Like if you wanted to be like a professional artist, this is like the type of thing that would that you that you could earn money doing, um, and it's a and, you know, it's not waiting tables. You know what I mean? Like, is it fine art? Like, do you get to like paint everything exactly the way you want it? Because you want to paint like you, know, you want to paint great oak trees, and you know they're telling you that you got to paint lakes. It's like, yeah, I mean, you know, they're paying you to do something, so you make a little bit of sacrifice, but you're also making art. So anyway. Um, this is, I thought this would be like a fun, you know, kind of almost like a real world application of like, you know, a fine art challenge. And that's, so think about it like that. Think about it like a challenge. The other thing is that these aren't your own ideas. So like you can be a little bit free. You know what I mean? You can like, it can look however you want. You don't know anything about the person. They don't, you know, so like this is supposed to be fun. Um, and I don't want you to put a lot of pressure on yourself. Um, we're gonna do, or I'm gonna read you the first couple pages and then we'll settle on probably three or four um, illustrate, you know, three or four stories in and we'll, um, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what comes out um, as we draw this. Okay, so the, um, I'll read it, even though you have to bear with me because I'm not a very good reader when it comes to, you know, talking, you know, reading out loud. Um, but this is the story, okay? I cannot believe I drew on the cover of this thing. It's hilarious. All right, the, it's called The Big Fish Dinner. Illustration to be determined. Apparently there'll be a, you know, uh, um, earrings. Where did I say they were from? I, Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia. Yeah, I don't know how Indonesian earrings are gonna apply to this story. I'll, I'll weave it in there somewhere, somehow. All right, here we go. So, Hannah and Aunt Mora are sitting on the porch playing a board game when Hannah asks, Aunt Mora, may we go fishing today? Aunt Mora answers, that would be so much fun, let's go. Hannah smiles and responds, if we catch a big fish, I know that grandma will cook it for dinner tonight. And then, so the, the red letter, the, what, the black letters are what's gonna be actually part of the story. And then the red letters are what the author wants the scene to depict. So it's Hannah speaking to Aunt Mora um, in a classic Chautauqua Lake porch, which is just like a lake house porch. You guys with me? Gathering their fishing poles, a net, ta a tackle box, Aunt Mora and Hannah are ready to leave. Aunt Mora tells Hannah, before we get the boat, before we get on the boat, we need to gather worms um, to use as bait to catch fish. So we've got worms, and then I drew an illustration of them, you know, digging up like worms, and there were like worms, and there's a tackle box, and there's a little net in the corner. Um, I put the fishing poles on the porch in the first one. Anyway, so that's it. So they're ready to go, but they have to get some um, worms to go put on the hooks. Section third page. Aunt Mo oh no. Sorry. These are front and back. So our, you're not drawing yet. We haven't drawn, no, we're just reading. You're reading the, the whole. 
Yeah, okay. I mean, I think, Got it. yeah, I think, I don't know if we'll read the whole story, but we'll settle on one that like sounds kind of fun. Um, as they approach the dock, the boat is tied up. Hannah tells Aunt Mora, what a beautiful day to go fishing. This is going to be so much fun. All right, so they are planting the seed for a good time. And then the red letters are, I envision this as a two page spread of the two walking hand in hand down a slight, uh, uh, down, a slight downhill meadow. This will lead to a weathered dock with a rowboat tied onto it. Oars in the boat, life jackets are hanging on a hook on the post on the dock. Suggest a bright sunny day, beautiful sky with some seagulls flying around. Whoa, that one's kind of nice. That one's kind of nice. We might come back to that one. <clears throat> All right. Aunt Mora rows the boat to the middle of the lake where the sun is bright and warm. So we could do a rowboat in the middle of the lake. That is like kind of open-ended. Um, oh wait, let's see, I haven't, I haven't even read this far by the way. The view this time is from the middle of the lake, the house with the porch and the gardens on and the dock are in the background. We see Aunt Mora Oh, we see the back of Aunt Mora. Anna sits in the back of the rowboat looking forward. All right. Um, the net has to be shown. That's kind of specific. All right, let's read the next one and then maybe we'll come back to this one. Let's see what we got. So that's a two page spread too. Aunt Hannah tells Mora, Hannah and Aunt Mora put, each put a worm on the hook and drop their lines in the water. They wait patiently. So I don't know if anybody wants to draw a, a worm on a hook. It sounds a little gnarly, but also cool. Um, in the boat, each of them, but especially Hannah, has a look of high anticipation. Hannah quickly reels her catch and proudly holds up the skinny flapping fish for Aunt Mora to see. Aunt Mora says, that fish is a beauty, but it is just too small to keep and we will have to put it back. Still in the boat, a proud Hannah shows off the fish with Aunt Mora explaining with a sympathetic face that the fish is too small. Okay, <clears throat> interesting. All right, so what I have a feeling is she puts, the, she puts the fish back in the lake. Then she catches another one. It's a little bit larger. She has to put it back in the lake. Then she gets another one. She still has to put it back. One more time, Hannah puts the worm on the hook and drops it back in. Patiently, she waits for another tug on the line. All of a sudden, she feels a break tug. This pole is strong and her fishing pole begins to bend so far that it nearly touches the water. Hannah uses her all her strength to reel in the fish. With a sparkle in her eye, Hannah shouts to Aunt Mora, do you think this one is big enough to keep? With an even bigger smile, Aunt Mora responds by saying, you bet, this fish is definitely a keeper. Hannah proudly holds up the big fish and we can see how big it is. Aunt Mora, who appears just as happy, gives applause to Hannah. That's kind of cool. So there's a scene where she has the biggest fish. So there's a small fish, a big fish, and then a real big fish. I don't know if we can keep going. Should we keep reading? Should I, do you want me to keep reading it? All right, let's see. Let's, uh, we gotta find out how it ends because I actually don't know how it ends. Um, satisfied with the catch, Aunt Mora rows back to the dock where grandma and grandpa are waiting for them. That's gonna be nice. Um, as the boat docks, grandpa calls out, well, did you bring home dinner for us tonight? Hold up, <laughs> um, holding up the big fish as high as she could, Hannah says, we sure did. 
Grandma tells Hannah, with such a big fish, we can invite your friends over so that they can enjoy eating the fish dinner. So while Grandpa is preparing the dinner, while Grandma is preparing the dinner, Grandpa and Aunt Mora, Mora prepare the table. So I guess they're setting the table. The view inside the house where Grandpa and Aunt Mora are setting the table, Grandpa is in the background in the kitchen preparing the meal. Hmm, Grandma's preparing the meal. While everyone is preparing dinner, there is a knock at the door. In walks Hannah's friends. Hannah greets her friends, four or five. Um, as they have either entered the foyer or are still entering the doorway. She's, there's, so I guess there's gonna be like different animal friends. With Hannah, her friends around the table, Grandpa. Okay, with Hannah and her friends around the table, Grandpa and Aunt Mora serve everyone. There are vegetables, salad, potatoes is the main course and the big fish that Hannah caught. Picturing a big oval table with happy children all around Grandpa and Aunt Mora are serving dinner. After dinner, Grandpa, after dinner, Grandpa plays the piano while Hannah and her friends gather around playing the piano, singing songs. That would be awesome too. Grandpa is seated at the right side of the piano playing on a stool and no, Grandma is seated at the upright piano, sitting at a stool playing a lively piano. Friends are gathered, Hannah with her mouths open, singing songs, smiling and having fun. Grandpa and Aunt Mora are standing on either side of the children. That could be cool, the sing-along. Hannah's friends call out, Hannah, this is the best fish dinner we've ever had. Thank you so much. Picture is from doorway, looking to sidewalk, seeing the children waving and thanking Hannah. Okay, so everybody's leaving for the night. As Aunt Mora tucks Hannah into bed that evening, Hannah gives Aunt Mora a huge hug and says, thanks for taking me fishing. This was the best day ever. Hmm. Picture of Aunt so Mora nice. in bed with a very dim light on. And that's it. She says good. She gives thanks and goes to bed. So I like it. This morning, when we were doing that part, the uh, I think we I think we should start. I think we should start actually with this one, not with this one. I think we should start back here. Um, the reason I'm, Aunt Mora rows the boat to the middle of the lake where the sun is bright and warm. The reason I think we should start here is because we don't know currently anything about Aunt Mora. We don't know if Aunt Mora is a bear. We don't know if, uh, you know, Hannah, it, I, we, like my, I would drew, I drew them as bears this morning. I'll give you a hint. And then one of the ladies was like, do the, are the bears wearing clothes? And I'm like, I don't know yet. You know what I mean? Like you can draw bears just in their fur or you could draw them wearing, you know, an apron or whatever. Um, so there's something about the, the lake, the boat, the fishing poles, the sun, the water, the mid and like drawing a boat in the middle of the lake with these two people sitting in it. Let me read the, uh, let me read the red letters again. The view this time is from the middle of the lake, the house with the porch and gardens on the dock in the background. So that way we get to draw the house in the background as well. We see the back of Aunt Mora. So we don't even need the, the face of Aunt Mora for this one. Anna sits back in the rowboat facing forward. The net is to be shown. Oh my gosh, this is so hardcore. This is so hardcore. <clears throat> Make sure no one's in the waiting room. Um, do you guys have any, does anybody have any thoughts on this? Thoughts, questions. Yeah, or, or slash um, questions. Surprise thoughts, anything at all. This is also a really destructive, really um, descriptive page where she gathers fishing poles, a net, a tackle box. I feel like the poles, the net, and the tackle box need to be on the boat. 
at least suggested on the boat. And then you need the, we need the little can of worms or the cup of worms. When I went fishing, it was always like a, it was always a white styrofoam, piece of white styrofoam cup for worms. Um, so what I was saying is, is that there is a, one of the exercises that I did in college, and it was one of the best, um, it was one of the best exercises that I did, I think, the, my, my, whole, my whole time there. I shouldn't say it. It was my, my experience at the Pennsylvania Academy was really good. Um, but there's this one class that kind of made you think outside the box a little bit and put you a little bit in an, un, un, uh, your, in your, un, you know, in a, in a zone where you're like, there's a lot of unknown. Um, and what happened was, is that we had these huge pieces of paper. They were four feet by six feet. And you had to fill the whole paper with a drawing. It was basically charcoal drawing. But where your starting point was, was something that was cut out of um, a magazine or a newspaper. So you could cut out an image, you could cut out, um, you know, cut out like, and, I mean, it could, it could be anything. Mine was like um, some like weird shell and you tape it on. And then from that, you have to extrapolate the rest of the design. Um, and it's amazing when you start off with a blank page, you, when you don't have anything to go on, it can be really, really, really intimidating. Um, at least for me. Um, but if you have a prompt, meaning you commit to one thing, like taking this piece of taking this piece of paper and gluing it to the paper, like it's staying there. You're not, it's not changing. So having like a commitment to a particular part of the picture, um, I think is a really interesting and a really good way to start the piece. So what I was doing this morning, which is what I think we all should do, um, is in this scene where it says Aunt Mora rows the boat to the middle of the lake where the sun is bright and warm. So there's a couple of things you could do. You could make the lake, like draw a lake, like the outside rim of a lake, make that the anchor and then design the boat and the sun and all the parts around it. You could draw the boat first. You could draw the sun first. Um, I think this time I might actually draw the boat first. Um, and then see if I can fill out the entire rectangle with interesting um, and pleasing um, components that have to do with the story. Um, I think for you all, you're gonna have to decide what the person looks like or what the people look like, if they are in fact people or if they're just, uh, or if they're animals of some kind. And they could be really, really simple. It could be like, this is totally your style. Um, you know, I'm, I haven't been using any color, but I, in theory, I could. I could also use some black pen. Um, anyway, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna stick with my, I have uh, Hannah as like a little, like a baby bear cub. And I have Aunt Mora as like a big bear. That's the only hints I'm gonna give as far as this goes. I haven't drawn the boat. I haven't, I've drawn the lake a little bit, but Definitely not in the middle of the lake. And I think it's got, I think the figures have got to be kind of big, at least initially. All right, let's give this a go. Um, in, in, the, in the first part, I gave the class 10 minutes to get this sketch in before we move to the next one. And I think this time I'm going to give 15 minutes. Um, I recommend drawing smallish, smallish. timer that. Um, like any and you guys please feel free to I mean hopefully you guys have already started um, if you have any questions you know speak up or else I'll just keep talking to myself and Stacy all right 15 minutes <laughs> on the clock so I actually started with another one. Is it okay if I do that one? Yeah, yeah. Do you need and do you need do you need me to read it or if you want me to reread any of the other pages? What, I, think I'm, I think I'm good now. Right now I'm working on the one with the beach and like the uh, dock and the boat. Um, I'm kind of working on the beach now. I kind of got like stairs down to the beach. 
yes. from a, a grassy hill. And then I'm also going to make a separate kind of like dock kind of with stairs up. So it's going to have like stairs up, stairs down, grass, sand, rocks. Perfect. Um, uh, yes, good. What did you start with? What was the first mark on your page? Just out of curiosity. The first mark on the page was uh, the line between the beginning of the rocks and the beginning of the downward steps nice. because I want... I wanted the rocks to be like the divider in between the uh, grass and the sand because it's kind of awkward just to go from grass to sand. So I kind of wanted to have like the rocks, like which trip. was inspiration from our Easter vacation or not Easter, spring vacation, sorry. Spring vacation, uh, we went to a house with a beach yeah. and it had like um, a really nice beach actually. Um, and then it had rocks until uh, right before it get, got to the sand and then it had really nice grass right above it, so <clears throat> yeah having having like a personal having a personal experience is going to make this like a thousand times easier i actually have a place um in mind too and it makes it convenient because i can i also know the location that my dad was you know writing about so it's kind of it does make it easier if you have a, you know, a, something in your mind's eye. And then when you do one part, then you'll remember another part and then you remember another part. And then, you know, then the whole thing goes down like that. Okay. All right. So this was my vision. Oh, wait. Okay. I have to flip it. It's so funny because the, uh, the instructions say that Hannah sits in the back of the boat facing the viewer, facing forward to the viewer. And I was envisioning the boat pointing in <laughs> And I'm like, oh, do I have to do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine. I'm going to do what I call, what I've been calling like God's eye view, where you're not, it's, it's sometimes if you're like totally above a situation, it's like bird's eye view, where you're looking down at like a plan view. But God's eye view, the way I interpret it in my own head, is um, above and a little bit to the side, but definitely above. So this is the back of the boat here. And then this is the side of the boat. I gotta make sure I find the middle. And this is based on a rowboat that I had when I was a kid. And a very did you ever row it down a stream oh i see what you did there uh i knew you would i didn't i didn't throw it down a stream gently <clears throat> but i did row it in a lake it's more like a pond somewhere between a pond and a lake i guess So now the question is, this is, all right, so we got this back bench. I've got my, I've got my um, x-ray vision. I'm gonna need my x-ray vision because if, the, if uh, Hannah is sitting in the back here, I'm building the bench, building the so inside of the, the boat. Maybe I should make a second bench. We make sense, but we'll do two benches. Yeah, yeah. One, four. One for Aunt Mora and one for Hannah. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna to get to the shoreline. I mean, how far away is the shoreline? I made it pretty high up. Trevor, excuse me for yeah. interrupting. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. I will see you next week. Trevor, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, you gotta go Would to anyone them. like to show me what they've done so far since I cannot stay later to take pictures? If you'd like to show before I go. Show. show. Sure. Right, here you go. I've not started on the dock oh, yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, wow, that's Very great. Very nice. Yeah, thank you.
Of course. Anyone else? Okay, well, I'll see everyone next week. Trevor, we'll talk later. Okay, Bye. yeah, talk to you later. Bye-bye. <clears throat>
So many things have changed for the better. Some things not. All right, so that's what I was going for. I guess I need, I guess instead of making it round, I'm gonna make it full, full, uncomfortable. Now I feel bad for this bear. Now, do you think, do you think the, if, there is this funny, it's not funny, it's just an interesting notion. Like the fact that I gave this poor bear this uncomfortable, that uncomfortable uh, life jacket. Does that mean, could the bear actually be uncomfortable in whatever dimension I'm creating here? I hope not. I may have put a little too much emphasis on that. Yeah, that's better. That was another one. <clears throat> All right, now this is the fun one. Um, the ant bear, she's facing away from us. So she's got a bear tail. And I've been making, I made her in my other illustration like really big, which is kind of fun. Like a, clearly a bear cub. And a full grown black bear. Question is, where should I place her? What direction should I place? This is her neck, by the way. This is her shoulder. This it's a headless point. bear. It's a headless bear at the moment. Now I'm wondering, now I'm thinking, what if should I make her head looking up to the left? Should I make her looking, you know, at the uh, at Hannah? I'll be right back. I think about it. Back in two minutes. After class today, we're doing, um, I'm cooking bacon cheeseburgers. I'm so excited. <clears throat> Oh, Hannah. Hannah's so sweet. Okay, what are we going to put in Hannah's uh, lap? Oh, we can put her foot on the tackle box. That's why it's elevated. That's good. <clears throat> um, any opportunity for overlapping is really helpful, especially in like areas that are really close and tight um, where there's not a lot of depth. If you can overlap things, it's able to show the depth. So if I have the edge of the boat here, then I have the paddle, which overlaps both the seat, the worms, and the tackle box. That's pretty good. I wonder if there's something else I can put in between the bench and the tackle box. I'll think about that. And there's little Hannah's bear claws. God, she's so cute. 
We'll give Hannah a little bear tail. All right, Aunt Mora. So I think I might do what's called a lost profile. So lost profile is when you have, um, you know, it's mostly the back of the head and then you see the side of the head and then the only parts the front of the face that you see are kind of cropped because they're facing away from you. It's actually, um, the view of Hannah here is called three quarter view. So you're seeing, you know, it's three quarters of the way to the front. So you're seeing uh, the front and the side and it's not only three quarters but it's also three quarters and above. So we're looking down um, at these guys. All right, so Hannah's neck. So I know that the, her cheekbone will be here. And then that will lead into up to the ear. So jaw bones always lead to the ear. And I'll get the, from ear to ear. And I got the cranium back there. So here's the top of the head. Yo, I never pressed, I never pressed go on the clock. Well, we'll just play this one by ear. I'll, I'll move it down to eight minutes. So the top of the head and then we'll do the brow. Then we'll do the cheekbone leading into the snout. Normally the snout would be really long but because it's three quarter view, it's kind of angling away from us. There's the side of the mouth, a little bare jaw, or like chin into the jaw. Now there was a side of me that was attempting to make um, this character look more feminine. I was wondering maybe just to not do that, but you know, not not be like cliche. Like the idea was like maybe she was wearing like a pearl necklace or something. What is that like? It makes her look like a circus, or like 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 a circus costume or something. I don't I don't even think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to let the bears be bears. They don't need clothes. They don't need they don't need to be humanized. Their activities themselves make them human enough. I declare. Oh, that's probably why I chose these. So I do, um, I do chainsaw carving, and uh, the classic thing to carve in chainsaws, uh, you know, with chainsaws in wood, is um, our bears. So I've thought a lot about, um, <laughs> I've thought a lot about bears. And their uh, and their forms. That might be why I gravitated to these um, characters. You know, these shapes as being characters. Sebastian, can you hear me? Yes. Good, gracious! I'm so happy that I mean, you made it. So it's kind of a long story. What we're doing right now. What's the story? Um, so my dad wrote a children's book. Um, based on my niece um, and I think my sister. I actually have to confirm all that stuff. Um, and the, uh, the synopsis of the story is that the, the, the aunt Mora and uh, Hannah, the, the niece, are playing checkers in the morning and Hannah gets the idea to go fishing. The aunt Mora agrees. They go out uh, to the middle of the lake with their worms and their life preservers. And uh, Hannah catches one, two, three fish. The first one's too small. The second one's too small. They have to throw it back. And then the third one is big enough. And so they go home. Uh, they bring the, they bring the uh, fish home. And then grandma and grandpa are there at the house. Grandma prepares the fish to eat. And the fish is so big that Hannah's allowed to invite her friends over. So she's got five friends. And then they eat dinner. And then they sing music by the piano. And then they say goodbye and then they say good night. So that's the story. Um, so this page that we decided that we settled on um, is this is this uh, this part of the story where it says Aunt Mora rows the boat to the middle of the lake where the sun is bright and warm. 
Wow. Okay, cool. So the reason I said wow is because I have not determined a light source at all. Um, so I have no light source here, but if it's, if it's like high noon, you know, if like the sun's up above, I can have some like deep shadows, some harsh shadows underneath, which actually might be a kind of a fun design component. Um, I hadn't realized this um, until I read the story completely where she goes to bed at night. Um, the, the sun in my story, there's like a morning light, you know, early morning sunrise is the first scene. And then it's morning light. This light will be midday, like when they're fishing will be midday. And then there'll be, you know, a sunset at dinner. And then, you know, a nighttime scene when they actually, when, when the kid actually goes to sleep. Um, so the, the lesson was about how do you start making art from, you know, with no visual references whatsoever, like just um, a prompt in terms of, you know, language in this case. Um, and, you know, you know, how can you develop your ideas that way? Um, and not only how can you do that, because, you know, you just do it, um, but then, you know, getting, honing your skills and getting good at that and being comfortable with that. Um, and then the, I started it off too with the difference between illustration and um, fine art. And where fine art, you get to choose how you do it, what you do, where you do it, what it means. You choose everything. Um, whereas illustration is, you know, somebody has a book or somebody has an idea and that they, they pay you to realize their idea. So you, you're kind of making, you're using your art skills to make their vision come true, which is totally legit. And you can be a, an amazing artist and help other people's visions become manifest. Um, but the fine artist, um, doesn't rely on anybody else really, um, in terms of it, you know them having their original vision. Um, okay, so then the the this part of the story it says Aunt Mora rose the boat to the middle of the lake where the sun is bright and warm, and then the red letters was the was the description of what the author was looking for. Um, the view this time is from the middle of the lake. The house with the porch and the gardens and the dock are all in the background. We see uh, the back of Aunt Mora. And then Hannah sits in the back of the rowboat looking forward. The net has to be shown. So that being said, I've got um, just the just the edge of the river, the, the lake up here. Um, and I've got the rowboat, which is based on, um, Mr. Messick made a really good point earlier when he was drawing the, a, a scene from another part of the story. Um, a beach scene, you know, based on a place that he was just recently at. Um, and this boat is, you know, I'm the, what I'm using to draw the boat is my memory of my childhood rowboat that we had over um, my, my, <coughs> my family's house backed up against BCC, Baltimore Country Club. We never belong there or anything, um, but they have a huge man-made lake in the back that they stock with fish. And anyway, we used to go hang out in the woods. You know, my, my friends and I, we would you know, look at birds, we would like make forts and we'd go fishing um, and we'd, we'd go, we'd row the boat, you know, row around the boat. So this is like, for this part of the picture, that's kind of what I'm envisioning. Even though I know that's not part of the story, it's not where the story is actually taking place, but that's the memories that I'm using in terms of like, I don't know how to draw a boat. So I'm like, I don't have a prompt in order I don't have a visual prompt. It's only, we're only kind of sketching this based on memory, which is kind of fun. And there's, a, I, I, I just had a funny idea too. I was like, with, um, with the size of my bear, Aunt Mora, I, I lifted the edge of the water. I don't know if you can see that, but I might make the edge of the water like, dangerously close to this to sinking. Um, that's actually really funny. I can make the back of the boat sticking out of the water a little bit. You see that? That's cute. So the, um, also the mantra 
and this is what you guys should remember for the rest of your lives. Um, it's like inspiration will find you. Meaning if you don't have anything to draw, just start working and inspiration will come. The vision, the, the clouds will open, the ideas will come, it will flow. It's just the, when inspiration comes, you have to be working when it comes. You, when you work enough and you create things out of your imagination and you create art, um, when, you get, when you do it enough and spend enough time doing it, whether it's creative writing, whether it's painting, whether it's whatever, when that the insight comes, you'll, you could be sitting in your car. Um, and then if you're sitting in your car or driving and you can't sketch, then you can't make art. And it's like, no, I'm having the idea right now. Like I read this story, part of the story last night and I was getting so many visions. Like, I was, like it was just flooding, like ideas for this was flooding my head. And I was like, I have to stop. Like, or I either need to go up to my studio and work or I need to stop because I mean, I don't want the, I don't want the visions to disappear. So um, the inspiration, you know, I promise you, I promise, I promise, I promise it will come. And you just have to, you just have to be um, working as you do it. So um, that's, that's the lesson is like, if you're like, I don't have anything to draw. I'm not inspired. I don't have anything to do. It's like, who cares? Like go and get a piece of paper, get your paints out and start doing something. And, 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 and ask for it. You know what I mean? ask for to whatever your aspect of the divine is. It could be yourself, just um, ask and it will um, become available. Should she be even bigger? Should her back be even bigger? Yes. Bigger the better. I was trying to keep the, the lessons up here. So yeah, the, the, it's about drawing from your imagination today but not imagination, but like drawing from a prompt that doesn't have any visual stimulation other than your own memory. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And it's hard. I mean, it's, it's like, it's not, it's not easy, but I think it's super fun. So this bright sun, um, sometimes when you're, when you're taking photographs, um, the, the light when you're outside, the best light for taking photographs is usually a diffused day, like a light when there's like lots of clouds and all the light is dissipated because what it allows you is uh, to see a full range of lights and darks because there's no harsh shadows. So everything is like really, really subtle. Um, that being said, if you're trying to communicate um, a bright, sunny day, then you know what you need to include are harsh, crisp, dense shadows. And I may do that. I think I'm like it's like, it's like a little premature um, to start adding shadows, but I just attempted to add some like deep, deep, dark shadows, very much underneath. I mean, imagining the sun is like directly above them like imagine the light is shining down like straight down on these guys like straight down from above harsh light straight down and then you know so when if that's going to that way then you're going to get a harsh shadow underneath the um light preserver you're also going to get a harsh shadow underneath the arm you know harsh shadow underneath the um, you know, the side of the thigh and then onto the, onto the um, seat of the boat. Anyway, like this, the harsh shadow would come down from the handle of the um, row, the oar here. 
you have the underside of the orb might be a really dark line and then the top of it could be a very light line. I mean, there might even be a shadow in the water on the water from the ore. <clears throat> you know, it's just like this intense spotlight from up above. And, you know, so it's not about even showing the light in this case, it's about showing the shadow. And again, I would never be drawing the shadow on the inside of a bear's ear had I not been prompted like this. So that's what's kind of that's what's kind of neat about the opportunity to, you know, make things that would have never been made otherwise. So guys, um, I don't know if this was a great lesson. I don't know if you guys got anything out of this today. Um, I hope, hopefully you did. It's just, there's so many ways to make art. You know, you can, you can, um, what, back to the, uh, the idea of um, being an artist and not having, knowing what to do. You know, you can study um, other painters. You know, that's part of what is the, like that Van Gogh means to me is like, if I don't know what to do, I just sketch some Van Goghs and then I'm like, oh, all right. There's a path, there's a house, there's a tree. I was like, I saw that on my way into work. I'm just gonna go and I drive up to Greenspring and I'm like, there it is. And then I can sketch that. So it's like the, the other artists can inspire you. Um, you know, so like the, the, the other people can inspire you. Um, you know, these, these, these commissions, like these jobs, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, and, and art, you know, part of what being an art teacher is, is giving the students prompts so that they, you know, can, the art can come out of them. It's like giving good lessons to get the art out. And, you know, we almost always do lessons in terms of like technical things, you know, drawing spheres, drawing cylinders, getting textures, you know, proportion, too long, too short, you know, that kind of stuff. This is a this is a, a very different this is a very different kind of lesson for today. So hopefully, I, mean, I really do hope that you enjoyed it. Um, and if it was hard, I mean that's good. <laughs> um, but as as awkward as it might be, attempting to draw. Um, you know, from like a one line. I mean, think about it. It's like one line. Aunt Mora rows the boat to the middle of the lake where the sun is bright and warm. Like, who is Aunt Mora? What does the boat look like? How big is the lake? You know, like, how are you going to represent a bright sun? How do you represent warmth? I mean, that's a whole nother thing. It's like, you know, when you color them, you know, if you color these, um, you know, the colors would have to be, even if the bears, you know, even if the bears are like brown or black bears, you know, like on a cooler tone, um, you got to figure out a way to make the scene feel really warm on a color scheme. I love that idea too. I can't get over how much I love this. Aunt, Mo Aunt Mora is really turning into a character. Um, it's 546. Do you guys want to see the sketches I made earlier for my adult class? Because I definitely did better with you all. And I'm proud of that. And I'm, thank I, and I'm thankful for that. At least with these, at least with the, at least with my bears. <laughs> All right, Sebastian, we'll catch you up on the beginning of the story. Let me put this here. All right. Um, this was the warm up, Sebastian. We did these um, Indonesian earrings, these gold Indonesian earrings from like 1000 uh, AD. 
I accidentally drew them on the actual cover of this book that I printed out. <clears throat> it's just like a manuscript. So the, the story starts off, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing because I'm really bad at reading because I'm dyslexic, um, but it's the Big Fish Dinner. And guys, you, so the, here's the story. So Aunt Hannah, Hannah and her, and her Aunt Mora are sitting on the porch playing a board game. And Hannah asks, Aunt Mora, may we go fishing today? Aunt Mora says, that would be so much fun. Let's go. Hannah smiles and responds, if we catch a big fish, I know grandma will cook it for her dinner tonight. So here is my first attempt. So my this morning, my drawings went like progress, they got progressively better as they went. So I'm just gonna point out a couple things. This is grandma cooking pies in the morning. This was also grandma. Um, I was like, maybe we'll see grandma in the window. And then I was like, oh no, we'll put grandma over here. So maybe this will be grandpa. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I, I'll redraw that as grandpa through the window. I was gonna show a sunrise right here. So this was all morning light. There's no light source. I came up with that now. I mean, I, 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 didn't, I came up with it during this class. I didn't draw this thinking morning light. It was just midday light. So this is Hannah, <clears throat> which I'll have to redraw. This is, no, this is Hannah. This is Aunt Mora. So it's the big bear, little bear. There's checkers going on. They're on a porch. Um, later in the scene, I put uh, Aunt Mora in a hat as she's walking down to the water. So I came back to this one and put the hair in there. Um, as I was waiting for the class to start, I added a little cup of coffee right here and then with steam because there was steam on the pie right there. And I, you know, strengthened the, 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 the features of the face. And when I say strengthen, I mean like, you know, I try to make it look like a face. It's a very rough sketch. This is just visions. When visions come out, they come out really rough. And then you refine them and refine them and develop them, um, you know, as you can. All right. So that's that story. There's like the banisters, sorry. Um, these are two banisters, poles, and then this the front of the porch. I was gonna put the, um, I didn't even know about the gardens until later. So these are the gardens. So at the bottom of this, I can make like different flowers or maybe tomatoes or something. Anyway, gardens turned out to be important, but only in the scene that we were doing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Next prompt. Hannah and her aunt are sitting on the porch. Wait, what? Sorry, that was the last one. Like I said, I'm not very, I'm not very good at reading. Okay, next one. Gathering their fishing poles, a net, a tackle box, Aunt Mora and Hannah are ready to leave. Aunt Mora tells Hannah, before we get in the boat, we need to gather worms to use as bait to catch the fish. So I was zoomed out and on the porch scene. And so the next one, I decided I would zoom in a little bit and um, I kind of want to cover this one part. So this is, this is how I started the scene. Um, I started with um, this patch. They were thinking about maybe drawing different sections, like the, the bears doing different things. So they went to the, wa they went to the water, but I zoomed in and I did this little patch of soil that's got worms. And then this is the styrofoam cup that has soil in it with worms. So I've got like a variety of worms, big worms, small worms, worms in different positions, a spiral worm. And then I've got this net here, which is just seen in the corner. We haven't seen like the full net. It's almost like an anticipation for what we're sketching on the boat. Um, because they're digging, I did a hand spade here um, with a handle. Um, and then some grass shoots in the ground. So I've got the environment. I've got this entire rectangle is plotted out. And then this was the tackle box. It's an open tackle box. It's got some fishing line, got some hooks. It's got some weights. It's got some bobbers. And then there's like a, like a, a lure, like a rubber lure that kind of like, there's like these weird fluorescent transparent lures that are made of, yeah, like they like look like frogs or tadpoles or something. Anyway, so I put that in the tackle box. And then I, I added a second sheet of paper. And this is where I was starting to like get a sense of what Hannah and the, the bear might look like. So this is the ba this is Hannah, the baby bear. And then there's the big bear of, uh, you know, Aunt Mora. So I added the paper and I did like a little, little, like a miniature portrait. 
And like I said, with the adults, I gave them 15 minutes, something like this. So this is again, like a, a relatively quick sketch. I have the dock back here. Um, and then I've got the sailboat, I've got the lake, this is the lake, and then that's the far side of the lake and some clouds. That group that I have, was making art with this morning, we had done a bellows that had a lake and some mountains and a foreground. And so I incorporated some of those ideas into this um, background zone. Um, and then I also put, I wanted a symbol of um, the love between, you know, the, the aunt and the, the niece. And I was thinking about something like something that would flow. I was imagining a light, like a, some kind of light. Um, and instead I came up with this stream. So I put a little stream um, going from the big bear to the baby bear, almost like a stream of knowledge, a stream of uh, love and joy, energy, water, all that, that flow that represents. It's a little thing, but you know, it's also, I think it matters. Um, the, the, my favorite part of the whole thing is this, I did a, um, a fishing line and I made it really light, but the fishing line winds through this hole underneath the spade, down in front of the worms, in front of the worm uh, pot and it rolls over. It's just like, I always remember we, the fishing line was always like all over the place. It was like so unruly. Um, this is where I also came up with the idea of a mouse. So here's this little mouse. Um, and the mouse is like totally random, doesn't mean anything per se, but I thought it was cute. And I was like thinking that it might be a good theme to run throughout the picture. So I pulled the mouse back. Oh. Oh, here it is. So then I came back here and I put the mouse right in this corner, peeking out. So like most people might not notice the mouse at first, but then once they read the story and they see the whole thing, um, I don't think the mouse is gonna have any kind of presence later on in the story, but I think I'm gonna have the mouse present in every picture. It's almost like a, a, another subtext theme to run through the, the picture. Or not the picture, but the story, the actual story. Um, all right, so that's that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with this, this piece. The first one I'm not happy with at all. This one I'm getting like a little bit closer. And I thought it was interesting to draw cylinders, you know, relating the cylinders of the worms to the cylinder of the handle, just kind of making connections, like making the, the, uh, the oval of the, of the spool of thread and then relating it to the oval or the ellipse that you have for the, um, you know, for the styrofoam cup. You know, just like trying to make like connections. And then, okay, so that's the story, gathering the fishing poles. And the next one is, um, I think this is the one, that, um, Mr. Messick, that you did, where it says, as they approach the dock uh, where the boat is tied up, Aunt Hannah tells Maura, what a beautiful day to go fishing. This is going to be so much fun. And then the red letters, uh, Sebastian, they say, I envision the, the author is writing this to the illustrator. I envision this as a two page spread, um, walking hand in hand down a slight hill to the meadow. This will lead to a weather dock with a rowboat tied to it, oars in the boat, life jackets are hanging on a hook on the post at the dock and suggest a bright sunny day with a beautiful sky with some seagulls flying around. Ooh. So I sketched this one. And this one was like my proudest moment, I think, of that particular class. Um, and this is where I thought of, for the first time, that lesson that I had when I was in art school, where I was like, you take a piece of paper and you glue it to a page. And then from that glued piece of paper that you can't change, you can't modify it, you can't do anything, you have to extrapolate the whole picture off of that. So I just was like, I'm gonna try that. So I put this sun up here. So I just drew a random sun and then I extrapolated the rest of the picture off of that. So I have, um, you know, Aunt Mora and baby, um, what's the baby's name again? Hannah, sorry. Uh, Mora and Hannah 
are walking down this hill. It's like more of a cliff than it is a hill, actually. Um, I don't know if I need to modify that, but uh, Mr. Messick was talking about having a staircase. I put in a staircase down here, which is great. And then a little street that kind of led down to the dock. And I was thinking the same thing about having the water line, having the beach, and then having the grass. And then, you know, when he was talking about putting a layer of rocks in between the grass um, and, the, and the sand, I was like, oh, yes. Like, that's totally what I needed um, in my picture. So I don't have that, but um, I will by the end of it. So now you have this like street zone, this grass zone, this rock zone, the sand zone, and then you have the water, which is wonderful. And luckily um, that was the boat that I did with the oars. There's no bench in there, so I have to add the bench. And that's what's so interesting is like the further you get along in the story, um, you know, you know, the more you get to know the characters. It's also really interesting in theater when you watch um, long-term shows um, or people that have been on Broadway for a long time and they, they learn their character and the nuances of the character and they grow with the show. Um, and you can see it in like kind of popular series. Um, the one that I, you probably shouldn't watch, it's, it's called Breaking Bad. It's really dark. My fiance couldn't even watch it. It's about drugs and all kinds of crazy stuff, but the acting is really good. And it was, um, anyway, so Breaking Bad, you could, you could watch the early episodes and you could tell that the actors hadn't quite figured out who the characters were. They were kind of feeling it out. They were sketches almost. Um, and they probably put in a lot of work in the um, development of that character even before the show started. But you know, if a show lasts six years and you're playing the same character over the course of like the better part of a decade, you're gonna really intimately get to know um, that character. And I think the same thing is true when we're you know creating these, you know, I, I know the same thing is true for me as I've gone. I mean, if you look at like this, look at these bears, versus the bears I just drew, which is like the fourth, you know, they're not even, it's not even close. I mean, it's like that, like, look at how these bears have, like, they've just evolved and, you know, versus those, those bears up there. So now I'm gonna have to come back here. I'll use the sketch, you know, I mean, paper is malleable, you know, you can change it or I could start fresh um, but knowing there's a, there's a concept in um, brainstorming, corporations use this all the time, where like you need the bad idea and you're like, but and you, you can't, you can't um, hate on bad ideas because the bad ideas are the ones that you use to get to the good idea. So you have a, you have a problem that needs solving. So it's like, let's come up with a bunch of bad ideas. And you're like, okay, well, there's a nugget of something that, you know, there's a thought train that's going in the right direction, even though that's a horrible idea even though this is a horrible drawing of a bear, it's moving, at least the bear decision was made. And now I'm, now it's evolved into, you know, an actual character. And I think by the end of the book, um, you know, it'll be much more established even further than it is in this position. So again, the, inspira you know, the inspiration, the bear was the inspiration. I found it working. What the final version of these characters ultimately be, um, will will come after um I've, I've i've made the um after i've done the work you know in doing the work um they will become they will become real and then the, then it'll seem like you know then it'll seem like it was easy and it's never easy you just start you, you start at the bottom of the mountain and you climb to the top and you know the top is great it's just sad because then there's no nowhere else to go and then you start another mountain so yeah, I'm sorry I went off for a long time, but I just think it, it's so interesting when I started, my, this all happened in one day. And then I started, and just the contrast between the nature of these, these characters are just so different. And it's really encouraging. I think there's gonna be, I think there's hope, there's hope yet. All right, I'm gonna stop the share and I would, I would like to see what some of you guys came up with. And even if you worked on something completely different, I definitely understand. So, I, I, but if you made art, I'd love to see the art because um, I love art.
Anybody want to go? Anybody want to volunteer? I can share mine. Let's do it, dude. I'll I only it. worked on the one, though. Yeah, I mean, I only worked on one. I, I mean, I, I thought I was. I had in, I had visions of doing four, but we only got to one. All right. Hold it still. Wowzers. Yeah, man. Oh man, you put the you put the I love it. The boat behind the dock, it's like a teaser. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll be able to explain way more of the boat like later on in the story. Um yeah, that's great. The tree's gonna be awesome too. The stairs, dynamite. Cool. Good. And at the very least, at the very least, whether you illustrate the story or you don't illustrate the story, um, you've been able to like engage in memories of the beach that you were at. And you know, that's gonna make that experience so much richer. And you'll probably even want to go back more. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, who's next? I guess Miss Foley's next on my thing. I chose elephants because it would be funny for elephants to be in a tiny little boat. <laughs> These are my elephants. That is beautiful. We go back. I think I might have. Stacy's not here to take pictures, so I think I'm going to do it. All right, let's see it again. All right, cool. I got it. Mr. Messick, we you put yours back up. I'm going to take a picture. A place pen. Did you do other art too, Julia? Can I see. Yeah, I did multiple variations, but I like the elephants the best. I gotta move back. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, what other animals did you choose, Maya? Can I see yours? Are you still there, um, Julia? Which ones did you see? Fish and which rabbits. You did rabbits too. Yeah. Maya, do you, do you want to show yours? Uh, Maya's out of the picture. Kaya, you want to show yours? Um, yeah, you don't, I mean, obviously you don't have to. Lonnie, how about you? Did you get anything good? Or are you still in the car? Lonnie might be asleep. Um, Sebastian, did you get to do anything in the last half hour? Uh, I did. Yeah, I see. Uh, let's see. Is that your puppy, by the way? Yep. Oh, He's cute. my pug. Right. His name is Nico. Oh, I love Nico. Whoa, Dag. That's great. I like it because it looks like mine, but better. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Well, you got something out of that, even if you came late. Um, all right, everybody. Well, I'm going to go make some bacon cheeseburgers. I hope no one's offended. If you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry. Um, have a great week, and I will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, guys.